Hi, my dear friends. Welcome back again. And you know, we yeah, are talking with a very important matter that is development. Everybody designs development. Everybody wants development. And therefore, it is one of the most important topics that everybody in the world is discussing about. And everybody talk about their share in development. Everybody talk about what is the government doing to bring development. So I say we discuss in detail what is the meaning of development, what is meant for one person, it may not be good for another person. What is development for one person? It may not be development for another person. So there is a lot of differences there from person to person. So we study in detail today about the income and the other criteria. Income and the other criteria for judging development. So let us see how can we say whether a country is developed or not, a region is developed or not. Let us see what are the criteria for judging or for finding out whether it is developed or not. And take um, textbook page number. Page number 10. Income and other criteria. So when we look at individual aspirations and goals, we found that people not only think of better income but also have goals such as security, respect for others, equal treatment, freedom, etc. in mind. Similarly, when we think of a nation or a region, we may besides average income Think of other equally important attributes. So, we yesterday saw as the income is increasing, people will think about having more things, possessing more things, material things, and getting more services and so on. So, they'll think about having a better house, having a better means of transportation, having better facilities, and so on. So, as the income is increasing, uh, people's desire, people's wants are also increasing. And what could these attributes be? Let's examine this through an exam example. Table 1.3 gives the per capita income of Punjab, Kerala and Bihar. So in your book you will find a table given there. It is given about the per capita income of three states. Which are they? Punjab, Kerala and Bihar. So here per capita income is we explained in the other day. That is the total income of the country divided by the number of people. That is the per capita income. So we can see there is such a large di uh, difference is there between countries. Punjab has got per capita income of 26,000 and Bihar has got only just 5,700. That means it is the average income of a person in the country. In Punjab, one person is able to earn 26,000 rupees in a year, while in Bihar, a person is able to earn only just 5,700 rupees in a year. You can imagine that is so low. He is working for 12 months and he is getting only just 5,700. That means there the per capita income is very low and uh, economic development also will be very low and the progress everything will be very low. So actually these figures are of per capita net state domestic product at current prices for 2002 and 2003. So this data is not that fresh one. It is some 18 years old. It was taken in 2002 and 3. Let us ignore what this complicated term exactly means. Roughly we can take it to per capita income of the state. We find that 
Of the three, Punjab has the highest per capita income and Bihar is at the bottom. So, we can compare, when we compare this, Punjab has got a very high and Bihar has got very low per capita income. This means that on an average, a person in Punjab earns 26,000 in one year, whereas on an average, a person in Bihar would earn only around 5,500. So, if per capita income were to be used as a measure of development, Punjab will be considered the most developed and the Bihar the least developed state of the three. Now, so if you consider at this per capita income, since Punjab is able to, Punjabi, a person in Punjab is able to earn 26,000 per year. That is in Punjab. Then in Bihar it is only just 5,700. So, based on this we can say Punjab is the most developed state in India and Bihar is very backward state in India. That is based on per capita income. We are calculating only how much money they are earning, average earning of money of the people of the state. Now, this is only just one criteria to see whether the country is developed or not. But there are also other criteria survey to see the overall development of the country or the state or the people. Let us consider another table given there in, a, in your textbook. We can see it is given again the three states, Punjab, Kerala and Bihar. And certain elements are they considered. What are they? First it is infant mortality rate per 1000. Then literacy rate and net attendance ratio for class 1 to 5. So other activities, how are these states performing? For example, infant mortality rate. What is infant mortality rate? That is children who are dying within one year after their birth. So, some states, the health facilities are very poor, so children are not able to survive. Within, before they complete one year, they just pass away. That is called infant mortality rate. So, out of 1000 children born, how many children are able to survive or how many children are dying? That is what is given here, infant mortality rate. So, see, in Punjab, it is 49. That means, out of when 1000 children are born, 49 of them die. So, so high. And in Kerala, it is only 11. Out of 1000 children, 11 die. Then, what is the situation in Bihar? Out of 1000 children born, how many die? 60 of them die. So, again, very high in Bihar. So, that shows another aspect of development. How are they able to survive, especially the children, the infants, after the birth? How are they able to survive or how many of them are they able to survive? So, in Punjab, 49 of them die out of 1000. Then, in Kerala, out of 1000, 11 of them die. Then, in Bihar, out of 1000, 60 of the children die within one year. Then, see the literacy rate. What is the literacy rate? Literacy rate means those who are able to read and write. So how many people in the state can read and write? For example, it is according to the census of 2011, 2001. So in Punjab, 70% of the people can read and write. That means out of 100, 70 of them can read and write. Another 30 of them cannot read and write. Then in Kerala it is 91 people, 91 percentage of the people can read and write. Out of 1000, 91 percentage can read and write. Then what is the situation in Bihar? Bihar, out of 100 people only 47 can read and write. That is more than half of the people, they don't know how to read and they don't know how to write. So literacy rate, their Bihar is lagging behind. So in per capita income also it is lagging behind. 
in infancy mortality rate also it is very high more children are dying there and those who can read and write also more than half of the population they cannot read and write and so on now let us see another aspect that is net attendance of the school so children how many of them go to school up to class 5 from class 1 to 5 how many of them go to the school so in Punjab, 81 percentage of the children go to school at least up to class 5 we are considering at to at least up to class 5 there 81 percentage of the people are going to the school and study up to class 5 then in Kerala it is 91 percentage 91 percentage of the people go up to go to school at least up to class 5 then in Bihar only 41 percentage of the students are going to school up to 5 so more than half of the children are roaming around they are not even going to school they are not even studying that is the reason why the literacy rate is very low because they are not going to school they don't know how to read they don't know how to write they know only how to speak that they learn from at home so reading and writing they are ignorant about it because they don't go to school or the parents don't insist that they should go to school or maybe it is since it is very poor people the parents tell the children you also come and work in the field no need to go to school so they think about this and just daily sustenance that is the reason Bihar is lagging behind it is not able to come up in development so in all the aspects that we saw we see Bihar is at the bottom the education level it is bottom the death rate it is at the bottom and at the per capita income it is at the bottom so always Bihar is at the bottom that means if you consider at the developmental rate or developmental situation Bihar is very much lagging behind Punjab and Kerala they are much ahead of Bihar now what does this table show so in this table we already saw what is the situation then the first column of the table shows that in Kerala of the 1000 children born 11 died before completing one year of age but Punjab the proportion of children dying within one year of birth is 49 which is nearly five times more so in Kerala, Punjab is it? the infant mortality rate is how much? 40, 49 out of 1000. So out of 1000 children born, every year 49 of them die. Average 49 die. Then in Bihar it is how much? We said in Bihar it is 60. Out of 1,000 children born, in Bihar, 60 children die. So we can imagine that the parents, they love their children so much, but they are not able to uh, help them to keep on growing. They lose their life within one year. Even before they complete one year, they die away. So because of lack of health facilities, no proper hospital, they may get some sickness, and the parents are not able to provide medicine for them, and the children die. So, what a pitiable condition it will be. The parents will be struggling. First of all, they are economically weak, developmentally weak, and the children that is born into their family, they also die. So, it is mostly the poor children die. Not Some are maybe rich and their children may not be dying, but it is from the poor family, most of the children are dying. And the problem does not end with infant mortality rate. The last column shows the more than half of the children in Bihar do not even get to go to school. So we saw in the last column the children who go to at least up to class 5, not even half of the children are going to school, even to study up to 5. So that's why their literacy rate is very low. This means that if you went to school in Bihar, more than half of your class would be missing. So if you are a teacher in school in Bihar, 
you go to the class and not even half of the school will be half of the classroom will be full very few children will be sitting there and those who could have been in school are not there if this had happened to you you would not be able to read and what you are reading now suppose you are living in bihar and you are a child in bihar and your parents will say no need to go to school you come let's go to the field and do the work and so you will not be able to get the knowledge you will not be able to get education you will not be able to read or write even the textbook that you are reading now you would not have it able to read if you are a person living in bihar so we need to be really grateful that you have got this opportunity to learn to get educated and so comparing to other persons living in different parts of india you are much more fortunate so make use of this opportunity nicely and get maximum knowledge so that you can excel in your studies and in turn you can help others especially people who are unfortunate unable to go to school or study maybe in the interior villages and so you may get an opportunity to teach them to tell them and to educate them at least informally you will be able to help them so that is different criteria that we see in order to see whether a state or a country is developed or not now let us see about public facilities public facilities so so long we are talking about personal facilities that those who have good money they want to buy and make a big house they want to buy a big car they want to have other facilities and so now let us talk about public facility the facility that is meant for all the public people in the town or in the village and so so how is it that the average person in punjab has more income than the average person in kerala but lags behind in these crucial areas so when we are talking about this table we saw in some matters kerala is ahead for example the per capita income of punjab is ahead that means punjab people have got more money than kerala people but we see the infant mortality rate more children are dying in punjab they have more money but their children are dying in kerala they have less money but more less children are dying and the education level also go to children go to school up to class 1 to 5 in punjab only 81 percentage is going to school but in kerala 91 percentage is going or literacy rate those who can read and write in punjab only 70 percentage people can read and write but in kerala 91 percentage can read and write so how is it punjab has got more money per capita income kerala has got less but still kerala is able to maintain good literacy for the people or good health facility for the people and so on what could be the reason so let us see how or why it is so so money in your pocket cannot buy all the goods and services that you may need to live well so if you want to live well you need to have good health facility there should be good hospitals there should be good schools and so on so punjab people have got money but they are not making use of it so keeping money in your pocket is not enough we have to provide facilities public facility so like schools hospitals and so on libraries all these are public facilities so it should be provided to the people the money should be made use for this then it will be benefited for all the people and everybody will become you can say they get literate they get good health and they get education and so on so income by itself is not a completely adequate indicator of material goods and services that citizens are able to use so income alone is not enough we said and how people have got more income but they are lagging behind in health sector in education sector and so on 
For example, normally your money cannot buy you a pollution-free environment or ensure that you get unadulterated medicines. So, for example, we say you have got plenty of money. For example, the people of Punjab, their the money is more, their income is high. But that is not enough. Having money in the pocket is not enough. You get good air. If you want to breathe good air, it is not enough. I am a rich person, so I should get good air. Nobody is going to give. You cannot buy air. Or you say, I am a rich person, so I should get pure medicine. Nobody should get adult medicine. Uh, should give me adulterated medicine. Adulterated means uh, not uh, pure, mixing with other things. So medicine should be pure. You should not mix other things in the medicine for the sake of making extra money. You should not adulterate. Adulterate means mixing with the good things, uh, thing, other things which are low in quality. That is called adulteration. So in the medicine also nobody should do it for the sake of making money because it is going to affect the health of the people. So, <coughs> So unless you can afford to shift to a community that already has all these things and money may not also be able to protect you from infectious diseases unless the whole of your community takes preventive steps. So if you want to breathe a good air, you must move to a place where fresh air is available or if you want to get good health then you must move to a place where health facilities are available. If you catch money and sit there, then you may have high income, per capita income, but you will not get all these things in your place. You have to search for it and you have to get it. So actually, for many of the important things in life, the best way also, the cheapest way, is to provide these goods and services collectively. So, if you want to learn things, you have to buy books. So, if everybody is trying to buy books, then it will be very costly and it will help only that person. So, instead, provide it collectively or for all. So, if there is a public library, you can buy plenty of books and keep in that. So, everyone who wants can come and take the book and read according to their place, according to the, their interest. So, public facility, that is more important. Just think. Will it be cheaper to have collective security for the whole locality or for each house to have its own security man? So now in the modern time, we are afraid of thieves, we are afraid of other strangers are not coming. So everybody wants to have protection, security. So they appoint a man, they pay salary to a man and say, you stand here as a security. If anybody comes then you have to check, you have to take care and so on. So if in that compound many houses are there which one is easy if everyone is appointing one is security or everybody together make one person a security which one is better certainly one person can look after all that area so that will be better so that is collective so everybody can work together they can pay certain amount of money to that person as a security fee and he will be happy to look after everyone so instead of everyone looking after their own needs, they can come together, discuss together and have a common program and they can um, same purpose, the same thing can serve for everybody's purpose. Then, will what if no one other than you in your village or locality is interested in studying? Would you be able to study? Not unless your parents could afford you to send to some private schools elsewhere. So suppose you want to study in your village, you are in your village and you want to study. Your parents are also interested in teaching you, sending you to school for education. But no other students are educated, interested. No other parents are interested in sending their children to school. So what can you do? Can the teacher come and teach only just one person in the school? It is impossible. The teacher may not come, so the government may not provide the teacher, and so you will not be able to get.
get education unless your parents are very rich and they can send you to other states where there is school then it may be possible unless it depends on the financial situation of your parents otherwise it is not possible and so you are actually able to study because many other children also want to study and because many people believe that the government should open schools and provide other facilities so that all the children have a chance to study so you are able to study because you are not alone other children also want to study other parents also want to send their children to study therefore there are many and therefore government is willing to open the school and all the children can study so it is because collectively if everybody come and say i want to study uh, this school other person say i want to study another school then it is not possible so but all come together and say we want to study then it is easy for the government to open the school and make them um, educated provide them facilities for education so that is very important that we have collective uh, purpose collective plan and work together to achieve the common goals and particularly girls are not able to achieve secondary level schooling because government or society has not provided adequate facilities so very often in societies what is happening is government is not able to provide much facility for girls especially for going out and to going out and studying and so on the girls they study for certain classes maybe up to high school or maybe higher secondary then they stop studying in most of places in especially in some other indigenous states or poor states because there is no facility for them so the boys will try to go to other states and study and get higher education but girls they stop studying because there is no facility in their own locality that is the situation in our country so kerala has low infant mortality rate because it has adequate provision of basic health and educational facilities so we said when we look in the chart kerala has got less infant mortality so out of 1000 children born only 11 die away so quite many are able to survive because there is good health facility hospitals are there similarly in some states the public distribution system functions well public distribution system or pds that is called ration shops government distribute rice and other essential food items to this pds shop <coughs> with a uh, less rate so that the poor people can buy rice dal sugar and other essential things and survive that is called pds so some states it is functioning very well the governments are looking after nicely and it is people are able to get it but some states it is not functioning those who are in charge they are not doing well maybe they are taking and selling it to some other people for higher price and so the poor people are not able to get it so if some pds shop that is ration shop and that's not function properly in such places the people there are able to get the problem rectified health and nutritional status of the people of such states is certainly like to be likely to be better so where this pds system is functioning properly they are able to get rice for a cheaper rate and they are able to have their food regular food regular meal every day in their life so those states they will have their health system will be better otherwise the parents are weak means children also will be weak and they may not survive for one year or so they may die away so this pds system that's why government has installed so that the people will be able to get good health by having proper food and it is distributed to the uh, ration shops or pds shops or fair price shop so that the people who are people will be able to buy it so that is how the government can do certain things facilities public facilities in order to help these poor people now some activities are given there 
So let us work this out. Look at data in table 1.3 and 1.4, the tables that we have already seen. Just look at it again. And Punjab ahead of Bihar in literacy rate, etc. As it is in terms of per capita income. So Punjab is ahead in per capita income as well as in education. So they have made use that money to make more schools so that more people are able to get education and so on. Then think of other examples where collective provision of goods and services is cheaper than individual provision. So we also saw about appointing security person or building schools instead of doing it only just meant for one child or one family, do it for all. In that all locality everybody can do together then it becomes more easy, more beneficial. Then does availability of good health and educational facilities depend only on amount of money spent by the government on these facilities? What other factors could be relevant? So, government may make school, government may make hospital, appoint doctors. So, but people also need to take care. People need to have that desire. I want to send my child to the school. If the parents are feeling, come, let's go and work in the field. No need to go to school. Not important to go to school. Then what can the child do? What can the government do? So, it is the grown-up people, especially the parents and the elders, they also have to decide. My child should get education, my child should go to school. So that desire should come, that cooperation should come from the people as well. Then only the works of the government will be successful. Then in Tamil Nadu, 75% of the people living in rural areas use a ration shop. So in Tamil Nadu, people, especially people who are living in rural area, in the village area, 75% of them have got ration shops. They buy things from ration shops. Whereas in Jharkhand only 8% of the rural people do so. But another state, poor state, Jharkhand. And there only 8% of the people have got this facility to buy things from the ration shop. That is PDS shop. And where would people be better off and why? So can you say which state people will be better? In Tamil Nadu or in Jharkhand? In Tamil Nadu, 75% of the people are able to get PDS uh, things, rice and other things. 70% of them, 75% of them. But in Jharkhand, only 8% of the people are able to get it. Others are not able to get. Other shops will be, things will be costly and they may not be able to buy. So these people are not provided. Maybe it is because the government is not taking care of it, the system is faulty or other people are indulging in corruption and so on. So people have to take care of it and protect it and need to report why these things are not available to them. So they need to take care of it and they need to get good uh, facilities. All these are provided by the government for the poor people and we must make sure that we get our right. All these things are available to us. Then see another activity is there, activity 2. That is about study table 1.5 carefully and fill in the blanks in the following paragraphs. For example, you need to, you may need to make calculations based on the table. So some calculation, some table is given there and below that there is fill in the blanks. You have to fill it up. So first one is literacy rate for rural population. So the rural population in our country, the literacy rate. Male, they have about 52 percentage. So, 52 percentage of the boys are able to get education. They are able to read and write. But females are so low. Only 19 percentage of the people are going for education. That is in the rural, in the village area. See how parents are doing. Boys, at least half of them go to school. But girls go very few of them. Only 19 percentage of them go to the School. Then literacy rate for children in the age group of 10 to 14. So children have between 10 to 14 years of age, how many of them go to school? That is both boys and girls together. So male, 68 percentage of the boys are able to go. That is in the whole country, both 
rural and urban areas. 68 percentage go to school boys. Then girls altogether only 39 percentage. Again, when we look at the whole country level also, the number of girls going to school are very less. Then percentage of rural children age 10 to 14 attending the school. If you take only the rural area, the village area, children going to school uh, between 10 to 14 years of age, again that is male it is 64 percentage and girls it is 39 percentage, very uh, less again for girls, for females it is very few. So that all shows the mentality of the parents, parents tell the children or parents don't take initiative to send the children to the school, that's why the number of female children lagging behind and they are lagging behind in literacy rate as well. Now see few columns to be filled up to few fill in the blanks. First one, the literacy rate for all age groups including young and old is 52, you can see in the first column, 52 percentage for rural males and 19 for rural females. So it is already given there. However, it is not just that these many adults could not attend school, but that there are dash who are currently not in the school. So what is the meaning? So 52 percentage boys are able to go to school and 19 percentage are able to go to school. What about other one? That many adults could not attend the school, but there are dash who are currently not in the school. So there are so many other percentage. That means 48 percentage of boys they are not in the school, and 79, 81 percentage of the girls are not in the school. And it is clear from the table that 69 percentage of the rural girls and 36 percentage of the rural boys are not attending the school. So we said the children between 10 to 14 they are attending only the rural area 64 percentage male and 31 percentage female. So how many are not attending? We have to minus from 100. 100 minus 64 it will be how much? 100, 100 minus 64 it will be 60 it will be 30 36 percentage of the rural boys and 100 minus 31 is 69 percentage so 69 percentage of the females and 36 percentage of the male they are not attending the school and therefore literacy among the children in the age group 10 to 14 is as high as 39 percentage for rural females and 68 percentage for males then this high level of literacy among 10 to 14 age group even after more than 60 years of our independence is most disturbing. In many other states also, we are now near realization of the constitutional goal of free and compulsory education and for all children up to age group of 14 which was expected to be achieved by 1960. So that was the target of the government and we need to ask ourselves whether we have achieved this target or not. So when we look at, so this is a all the data, now the situation may be a little more better, improved, more health facilities, more schools have been built. But still we need to um, ask ourselves whether we have achieved this goal or not. The goal was set for the year 1960 and the data we are studying about 2001-2003 and so on. So even after 40 years after the target, whether we have achieved this goal or not, we have to ask ourselves or we have to make a survey and see how far we have improved, how far we have gone ahead. So let us ask the government 
if we like facilities, we can demand because it is our right. And when government has provided, we have to make use of it, not simply destroy it. Some of the government schools, if we go to village, we can see cows are sleeping there. People are not going to the school. Parents are not sending their children to the school. It is simply uh, kept as an animal shed. So such kind of things should not take place. If the government has provided something for us, we must make use of it maximum. So that it will benefit us, we will be able to um, progress with uh, more development, with more literacy rate and so on. Whether it is hospital or it is school, let us make use of it fully because government has provided it for our advantage. Let us make the maximum use of it. So today let us wind it up and we will meet again in the next class and until then, bye. Thank you for listening.